What is up, s'mores? Welcome back to my channel. It is me, Marshmallow Sketches, or Maddie, if you know personally, which in that case, I'm very sorry. Today, I wanted to do the Mike Wheeler Queer Coding Season 2 video. I did Season 1 like 11 days ago, I think, and now I'm doing Season 2. I wanted to do it last week, but then like a lot of stuff, like I had a busy week, and then I just didn't do it, so oops, but I'm doing it now, and I'm very excited about it. Um, please remember, little opinionated disclaimer here, everything I'm about to say is completely biased and completely opinionated, and if you have opinions on this, I would love to hear them, because I like hearing your guys' thoughts on things. Thank you so much for all the support on my last video, I'm very thankful for all of you, and I'm very excited to talk about season 2 today. This was a very fun season to rewatch, season 2 is probably my favorite, I will say. I love the, I love, um, like, the shadow monster, and I love like the general aesthetic of the season so everything about the season is just nice i've always liked it so it's probably my favorite one season two episode one at seven minutes 59 seconds mike is in all blue and will is wearing green um at 9 16 mike takes will back inside setting up their dynamic this season with like mike taking care of will and the two of them growing closer they grow closer a lot throughout the season like even like if you see them platonically like like their friendship is so precious this season, it's amazing. And if you see it romantically, this is like a beautiful friends to lovers progression. So no matter how you see it, their dynamic this season is actually really adorable. Also, if you um, if you are unaware, I talk about their costuming a lot because the colors that they wear matter a lot. If you wanna hear more about that, I'd go watch the season one video or you can just look up, like you can just Google the Blue Meets Yellow in the West thing with Mike and Will, you'll probably find something but their colors are blue, yellow, and green. And so when they're wearing those colors dur during certain moments, it it seems to be of significance. And when you hear what the costume designer had to say about how she chose to design these costumes, it just feels very intentional what colors they were wearing. I mean, the, the triangles on Robin's outfit were intentional. So I feel like <laughs> the colors that they're wearing being intentional is not that much of a stretch. You know what I mean? <laughs> so we knew we'd wanted something that felt like an outfit maybe he would have bought at the airport before he got there. We had made two colorways. We made orange and teal and he's worn teal before. So it felt like orange was the best color that was different from his closet that felt like he was trying to make it work in California. The shirt that he's wearing in teal has, you know, like the diamond shape and it's a the angles of the shirt are a little more edgier. So it's like you're physically seeing sharper images and sharper corners on him because he's turning a little bit edgier. Later on, the next outfit is a little darker, which reflects that she really is kind of in mourning and trying to cover up. So the outfit is kind of baggy. The jeans are kind of baggy. You know, she's kind of trying to hide it and protect herself in her clothes. At 2041, the boys are trying to figure out if Max is Mad Max. Mike immediate dislikes everyone's infatuation with Max. I have a personal theory that he thought that Will had a crush on her. Same thing with like the Angela thing in season four, but that's just a personal theory. So I don't have actual I don't have actual proof for that. I just think it would be a fun theory to think about. Just the idea of him being jealous because he thinks that Will has a crush on her. Because even Will was very interested in understanding who Max was, and so maybe he thought that he liked him or that he liked her or something, and so he got jealous. But just personal theory. <laughs> At 34.08, Nancy is crying in the bathroom after having to lie to Barb's parents about Barb's death. It immediately cuts to Mike putting toys in a for sale box. He's very sad, his clothes are dark, and the only colors are like red and yellow stripes. And personally, I think that red is kind of L Mike's color. I say L Mike because that's the platonic ship name for them. But I personally think that red is their color because I notice red a lot in scenes with the two of them in it. So I do think that red is their color. His dark blue shirt looks like practically black. It doesn't even look blue. He looks at the dinosaur toy he showed Al, Rory. I think it's so cute that he named it Rory because it roars. The, I, I saw someone tweeted that. I don't know if that's like canon. I hope it is because that's adorable. The idea that he named it Rory because it roars, that would be, that is so cute. That is so precious. And the Millennium Falcon toy that the, and the Millennium, the Millennium Falcon, Millennium Falcon. Why can't I talk? Oh my gosh, the Millennium Falcon toy that Elle played with. He gets up and walks to his fort and he tries to talk to Elle with the walkie. These scenes are parallels to each other, both Wheeler siblings getting over the loss of their friends and dealing with the grief associated with it. Barb and Elle. Mike and Nancy have quite a few parallels, I noticed. And I, I one, I think it's really sad. And two, I think it's interesting because I think that with this parallel, them both dealing with the loss of their friends also alludes 
to my theory that Mike does not feel things for Elle. He's just like a really close friend to her. And there's a couple of parallels in this season in particular that specifically point to them being just friends and being platonic. So just wanted to point it out. Season two, episode two. At 7.49, Elle tells Hop, we're not stupid, right after a scene where Elle visits the Wheelers. I point this out because of the correlation between the words crazy and stupid in correlation to the word love. It is a very consistent comparison throughout the show. The words stupid and crazy are used consistently to describe loving someone, you know, like they do say blank makes you crazy and crazy together and the woman that works at the police station who said only love makes you that crazy sweetheart, etc. So I just think it's interesting that she says the line, we're not stupid right after visiting the wheelers. But then again, it could also just be a very coincidence kind of situation. It could be completely unintentional. I just think it's worth mentioning in case it is, in case it is intentional. At 3334, Mike is the only one with a yellow bag for trick-or-treating. Dustin Lucas will all have blue bags. I just think this is an interesting choice because they all have blue bags and then Mike is the only one with a yellow bag. And I just find that super interesting because in this scene in particular, he is pretty focused on Will and what Will's going through. And so I just think it's interesting that his bag is the only one that's yellow because yellow is supposed to be Will's color. Also, maybe this is just a coincidence, but Mike has made some interesting choices or has been not himself while wearing yellow. In Lenora, he was wearing yellow and he wasn't himself. He was a cheap knockoff of himself. And in Hawkins in season three, he had a huge fight with Will and he was acting like he did nothing wrong at all in the situation with Al and he was wearing yellow. And in this scene, he's holding a yellow bag when everyone else is holding a blue one in the scene where he's very upset with Max for just being a part of the party. It just seems like it's a pattern at this point that he wears yellow when he's making not so great choices or being mean or just in general, just wearing yellow when he's not himself. That's just what I noticed. And sure, they're all having, they all have blue bags, which is Mike's color. But in this situation, it feels significant that he's holding a yellow bag. At 35.12, Mike is annoyed everyone is hanging out with Max. It immediately cuts to Hopper putting a yellow flag in the ground. This feels, like, really specific to be unintentional. I just feel like there's little moments like that. Like, that on itself, by itself, it may sound like, okay, who cares? But it's just, it's so interesting to me that he's very upset that Max is hanging out with everybody. He's upset that Will's okay with it. And then it immediately cuts to Hopper putting a yellow flag in the ground. Like, they could have used any color, but he's putting a yellow flag into the ground. I, and I don't know, it just, it feels too intentional, you know what I mean? It's just one of those things. Like, I like reading between the lines and looking at, like, the hidden details and things, and so it's just stuff like this that feels very purposeful, which is why I included it. 3903, Mike is annoyed about Max and asks Will if he agreed to letting her join the party. What? To her, joining her party. It's just for Halloween. You should have checked with me. Well, they were excited, and I guess I thought you'd be okay with it. She's ruining the best night of the year. At 4049, Mike finds Will, and he says he's going to get him home. Will, what's wrong? I couldn't find you. Are you, are you hurt? Are you okay? okay? I don't know. I'm going to get you home, okay? I'm going to get you home. I, take it I got him. I got him. Retreating. I'm bored anyways. A.K.A. his basement. Like, I find it so interesting that he says i'm gonna get you home okay and then it like he immediately brings him to his house and it's just like i find that so interesting because so like he chose to bring him to his house and to go to his basement and he said that was home and that's really precious to me romantic or not it's still very precious that home to the two of them is his basement because like even in season three like Will references, references, well, Mike says, what did you think we were just going to stay in my basement all day for the rest of our lives and play video games? And Will was like, I guess I did. I really did. Because like that basement, that, that place is like home for them. And I think that's really beautiful. Like regardless of how you see the show or how you see these characters, that's still like a beautiful thing. The fact that this is like a home for them. It's very beautiful. I like it a lot. At 4250 is Stancy's um, BS scene. And then at 4558 is the crazy together scene. I just think this is interesting because it's like another, it's another Nancy and Mike parallel and a Stancy and Byler parallel where 
Steve and Nancy are realizing that their love is BS, that their love is like not real. And then Mike and Will are realizing that their love is crazy. They're crazy together and love makes you crazy. So their love is real, right? Like it's the two parallels, a couple realizing that their love isn't real and a couple realizing that their love is. It's just, it's a very beautiful parallel. I think that they did, like, it's very interesting. It's a good, like, I like that parallel a lot. At 4618, they both smile, look down and to the side. In the corner on Mike's side, it says warning above, and above it is a Mike drawing. So sorry, I completely forgot to mention, um, in the scene where Mike and Will are, um, how when they had their crazy together talk and then it pans out at the end, I forgot to mention that there is a little thing that says warning, but there's also something a little bit lower that says danger. So it says both warning and danger in that little on his like proton pack or whatever it's called. And so it says pro, it says warning and then danger. And I think that that's, <laughs> I cannot, I was, I was rewatching cause I was, I was screen recording to get some scene packs so I could use them in the video to show you. But then I realized that it also says danger and danger is written in blue and warning is written in red. And like I said before, I do kind of associate red with like, Mike and L, and then I associate blue with like Mike and Will and so I think it's interesting that there's a red and blue sticker and they both say warning and danger I just think it's incredibly interesting and then on the other side Will's warning is completely it's it's not visible it's blurry it's out of focus and it's it's not visible and so I just I think it's so it cannot be a coincidence it had like there's no way that's not intentional it says warning and danger right next to him like that's it's, it's crazy there it is. We have warning in red, and then in blue we have danger. And then we have Mike and Will sitting right here, but right there it says warning and danger. And then above him is like a drawing, which I thought was relevant, but I'm, I'm kind of rethinking that now. But yeah, it says warning and danger right there. That is crazy. <laughs> and then over here, you can't even see his, even when it like pans out more, it's like blurry and out of focus. Like, there's no way that's not intentional. The fact that there's a shot of them, they like, they both smile and they look down and then they look to the side. Like, they just realized, they look like they just realized something. And then in the corner is on his pro, it was like, I think it's called a proton pack. Like, his Ghostbusters costume, it says warning. And on my, Will's side, the, like, the warning is blurred. So that means that that's intentional. <laughs> the fact that that warning sign is visible is intentional. And it just says warning in the corner. And I think that this is because... Mike is like realizing that he feels something and he's scared. And so just this, the fact that there's a warning sign next to Mike is so interesting to me. And it like, I think that it couldn't possibly un be unintentional. Like that feels so specific. And there are a couple scenes in season three and four. Well, I think specifically season four, cause I don't know about through season three, maybe I'm misremembering, but there are certain scenes where there are like words behind Mike that represent like what's, what he's going through, what he's doing. And I find that interesting because, because Mike is canonically a writer. He wants to be a writer. And so the, like, I may be reaching, I may be reaching. It is very late at night. I may be losing my mind. I may be going cuckoo in the head, but I do think that this could be intentional. And it just feels, it just feels like a string of coincidences. And it's like, it just makes sense to me. Maybe it doesn't make sense, but it like, to me, it makes sense. So yeah. Season two, episode three. At 940, Bob tells Will about Mr. Baldo. I am pointing this out because I noticed that there are a couple of, like, I feel like it's pretty obvious that, like, it's even been confirmed that some of Stranger Things is inspired by Stephen King's work. And so I don't think it's that much to say that some of, some of it could be incorporated into Stranger Things. And there are a couple scenes in this show that feel like they're, they feel very similar. Like, in It Chapter 1, if you haven't seen it, please don't listen. But in It Chapter 1, when Eddie breaks his arm and Richie is like trying to like get his attention because Pennywise is walking towards him, it feels very similar to when Mike found Will and he like, they, they're like in the same positions. They're in the same positions, both mentally and physically, because they're both like standing in the same place and Eddie is traumatized. I mean, his arm just broke. Gosh, that was like horrifying to watch, but like his arm is broken and he's terrified. And Richie's just trying to distract him. Gosh, I love it. I love that movie so much. And Richie's just trying to distract him. And I just think it's interesting, the Reddy and Byler parallel there. And again, it could just be a crazy coincidence and I may be reaching a lot, but it just, regardless, it, it like not even as evidence. I just think it's an interesting parallel and it's, it's just like, it's fun. I think it's cute that there's like a parallel between the two that I noticed. I thought it was kind of, I just thought it was interesting. Regardless of if it means anything or not, I just think it's nice. Especially because Richie canonically does love Eddie and Will canonically does love, um, 
was about to say Richie, but no, <laughs> Will does canonically love Mike. And so, I don't know, I think it's interesting because there's a lot of, there's a lot of, I'd say, discourse or conflict regarding, regarding whether or not Eddie and Mike feel the same way towards Richie and Will. So, I just think it's not that much of a reach to say that some of their things could be parallel because their situations feel extremely similar with both Richie and Will dealing with a lot of homophobia in their, in their small towns, Derry and Hawkins, and with Eddie and Mike's feelings being unknown or just like a question mark. And so I just think, I just, I think, I just think it's interesting. I just think it's interesting that there are a couple of It and Stranger Things parallels. And I think that they're worth mentioning because they could mean something. They could be alluding to the same thing because Rich, because Ruddy and Byler's situations are kind of similar. In, in a lot of ways, they're very similar. At 2139, Will hands Dart, Dartanian, to Mike. And when Dart is handed to Mike, Mike is the only one who's not disgusted. He's like, just, he's just fascinated. He like stares at it and he looks at it and he's just like, what is he? He's just curious. And it's funny because everyone else is like, oh, don't, don't give it to me. Gross. And they're all like, ew, it's so slimy. But then Mike is just like, oh, what is he? He's like so fascinated. I love him. He's so precious. He's just like, oh, what is he? <laughs> and he's also wearing blue this episode, which is notable. At 2245, Dustin says a few lines in the scene that are, in my opinion, important to point out. With almost all of his lines in the scene, the rainbow is behind him. The rainbow apple is behind him. He says, At first, I thought he was some type of polywog. Polywog? It's another word for tadpole. A tadpole is the larval stage of a toad. I, I know what a tadpole is. All right, then you know that most tadpoles are aquatic, right? Reptiles are ectothermic. He says, they love heat and the sun, but Dart hates it. And then the camera pans to Will. I think this could mean something. Obviously, he was possessed by the Mind Flayer slash the Shadow Monster who likes it who likes it cold. He likes it cold. But in this scene, Dustin talks about what Dart could be. And I just think, hear me out here. See, a lot of people make a lot of jokes about Dart representing homosexuality. People make a lot of jokes about how Dart represents the LGBTQ community or something. I don't really know. There's a lot of jokes around it. But I'm going to be super serious here and say that I do think his presence in this episode could actually be important to both Mike and Will's journey <laughs> regarding their sexuality. So I don't think it's a joke. <laughs> I, th I, I do think that the exaggeration of it is kind of funny. But like if you if you actually think about what's happening in the scene, it could it could actually make sense. I don't think I don't think Dart represents <laughs> them being gay. But I do think that him in this scene does actually represent something. Um, Dustin says, Bulls are aquatic, right? Well, Dart, he isn't. He doesn't need water. Yeah, but aren't there non-aquatic polywogs? Terrestrial polywogs? Yep, two to be exact. Terrestrial polywogs. Yep, two to be exact. Then he takes out a book to name the two terrestrial polywogs. He says, Indirana Semipalmata and Adinomera Andrea. I hope that's how you say it. But when he says Indirana Semipalmata, it immediately cuts to Will and Mike. Two to be exact. In Durano Semi Palmetta and the Agenomira Andrea. One. This feels intentional because he's reading from a book and then after it says Will and Mike, it cuts back to the book to the next type of terrestrial polywog and then it cuts to Dustin, which I think is just wildly interesting. Like, why would you have a two second clip of Mike and Will reacting to him saying Indy Rana Semi Palmata? Why is that important? Why did you include that clip? That just, like, when I watched it, I was like, oh my gosh, I never noticed that. That's going to drive me crazy. And so I spent the next week of my life dedicating myself to understanding why that was. And I researched Indy Rana, Rana semi-palmatas, and I found some stuff. Terrestrial polywogs develop differently than most tadpole slash polywogs develop. And Indy Rana semi-palmata is one of those two terrestrial polywogs. And Indy Rana semi-palmata is Latin for half-palmed. In English, half-palmed means to make something seem to disappear by hiding it in the palm of your hand as part of a trick. This is a reach. I'm going to admit that. I'm going to point that out. But in my head, this is either a crazy coincidence, a total accident, or it's on purpose. I just think it's interesting that in, in Latin, translated to English, Indirana semi-palmata means half-palmed, and half-palmed means to make something seem to disappear by hiding it. That's just, that just seems so, like, that just seems so specific. When I read that, I was like, there is no way. There is literally no, how? How did that happen? That's crazy. It's crazy that it immediately cuts to both Mike and Will in that scene. 
because he's referencing a polywog, a terrestrial polywog that there's only two of. That Mike and Will, there's two of them. And these terrestrial polywogs develop differently than other tadpoles. And when he references the other tadpole, the other terrestrial polywog, it, it doesn't cut back to them, but this one does. And Indirana semi palmata means to make something disappear by hiding it in the palm of your hand. That's just, that's so crazy to me that it immediately cuts to them right after referencing this specific polywog. And this specific terrestrial polywog means something in English that references hiding something or making something seem to disappear. That is just... It's just so interesting to me that I can't help but feel like that's on purpose. And I just, I don't know, I just can't help but feel like that's on purpose because it just seems so particular. It just seems so specific in this situation. It immediately cuts to them for like two seconds and then it cuts back for the next one and then it's just continued on with the conversation. It doesn't cut back to them again. It just cuts to them for that little second clip and I'm like, why would you do that unless it's on purpose? It's just so specific. People think, people make a lot of jokes about Dart representing homosexuality, but I genuinely think Dart and Max represent Mike's internalized homophobia in this episode just a little bit. But again, I will admit, this is a reach, <laughs> and it's more of just like a fun theory than it is a legitimate suggestion of evidence. So yeah, I just thought I would include all of that. Season 2, episode 5. At 1 minute 23 seconds, Mike walks into Will's room. This is one of the first times he uses the Will voice. <laughs> Um, if you don't know what the will voice is, I'd be happy to explain it. Um, but basically, people have, uh, including me, I've noticed that there are many scenes where Mike changes his voice when he's talking to Will specifically, and it like it becomes softer and quieter, and it's just it sounds very different to, to how he normally talks, and it's very specific. And people have named it the will voice, and it's very precious. A shadow grows on the wall behind you. I'm serious, mom. No. No, 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 no way. You're not getting a date with her. Mike, I don't know. I have a bond. A bond? Just because he likes nougat? No. Seriously? Yeah. Yeah, I really do. Will, what's wrong? Do you remember the first date that we met? Hey. <gasps> Are you okay? Yeah. Are you sure? I'm not trying to be a jerk. Okay? He tells Will it's going to be okay. He's wearing blue and Will's wearing gray. At 2239, Will's shirt and pants are both blue now. I think it's because he now feels supported and loved by Mike in this scenario. Because I can't imagine how scary that must be to, like, be possessed by this, like, crazy, like, creature and to feel all these things and to know things that you didn't know before and to deal with the now memories and everything that he's going through. But then he has his best friend by his side just there for him and supporting him through all of this. And I just think it's beautiful. And that's why I think that he specifically changed into all blue because now he feels supported by Mike and blue is Mike's color. Season 2, episode 6. I want to point out that Will screams for Mike and his mom. I think they built a really mutual sense of safety with each other, which regardless of how you see them, romantic or platonic, that is really precious that they have this like mutual sense of safety with each other. And like in like one of the most traumatizing and scary moments of his life, he's just screaming for his mom and for his best friend. And I just, I think it's really sweet. And the fact that Mike is like so like, like shocked and traumatized and he's just covering his ears because he doesn't want to hear his best friend screaming. Like I wouldn't either, that sounds terrifying. At 2115, Will recognizes Mike, but not Hopper. Mike smiles, looks down, and he looks kind of flustered. I want to point that out. He looks flustered. Like, Finn Wolfhard is so good at, like, micro expressions. Like, just the little moments where his face, like, just represents everything that the character is feeling. Like, he's so good at what he does. It's, it's amazing. It's phenomenal. I literally, Finn Wolfhard is one of my favorite actors. Like, he's so good at what he does. At 3443, Mike's arm is extended under the table, meaning that he's likely holding Will's hand, which I think is precious, and I want to point it out because it's cute. Season 2, episode 8. 3713, Mike's speech. From, it was the best thing I ever did, to you said yes, you said yes. Like, this scene is so amazing, like, just in general. The lighting, Finn's performance, the bright yellow stripe visible on his shirt. This scene is so beautiful. If you see it romantically like I do, it's extra cute. If you see it platonically, it's still a beautiful scene. Regardless of who you are, how you see this, this this scene is so well done and so beautiful. It's just a raw, beautiful moment, and it always makes me emotional. Like, I almost always cry when he starts talking and he's, like, crying too. Like, it's, it's such a beautiful scene. And I want to point out that Will taps and he starts to tap in Morse code and he, Will is coming through, like, um after his speech which i just think is super sweet that he was able to pull him out of that like 
in in two in two separate situations he was able to pull will out of it for a moment to like see him like that's that's really beautiful that he was able to bring him out just a little bit season two episode nine at 5145 will is asked to dance and mike encourages him to he looks regret he looks regretful almost immediately after this happens like the look on his face looks like regret like i don't know if it maybe that's just how i see it but personally i just see pure regret on his face Dustin and Mike both stare at Max and Will, the people they wish they were dancing with, allegedly for Mike. Mike stares for longer, though. 40 seconds exactly. And Dustin starts talking and Mike stops staring. But I just find it interesting that he literally just sat there staring at him for 40 seconds. At 5629, Elle walks in. They dance and kiss. There are yellow and blue lights above them. They are wearing blue. Three out of six people in the party are dancing with who they like, Elle, Lucas, and Max. Three are not, in my opinion. Dustin, Mike, and Will. Dustin and Mike's dilemmas appear to be the same. They didn't dance with who they wanted to dance with, so they both dance with another love interest. They've moved on from, of course, Nancy and Elle, because it is established that Dustin actually had a crush on Nancy. And that's not a ship. Do not ship them. That's not okay. But that was a previous love interest of his because it was a previous crush. And for Elle, Elle and Mike, they like Mike, Elle was Mike's previous love interest. And so I just think it's interesting though that those two characters are parallel and it's another Nancy and Mike parallel too because Nancy doesn't like Dustin she's dancing with him but she doesn't like him like that and so I just think it's interesting that those, those those characters are paralleled with each other in a way that just makes it seem like they have the same dilemma that they're, that they're dancing with their, like somebody else just because they can't dance with the person they want to dance with and so yeah so yeah <laughs> I say I said yeah way too many times in that sentence <sighs> That is all of the queer coding I have for this particular season. It was a little bit shorter than the last one. I mean, I feel like I've been filming for longer. It's like almost 45 minutes long, but um, <laughs> uh, this, this, this one was only six pages and, and the last one, season one video was like nine pages. So, wow. So please tell me if I missed anything or if you have any thoughts on anything I said. Um, this was really fun. I love you all so very much. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like this video, subscribe to my toast little family. I hope I'm doing the heart right. I think I'm doing it right. My friend taught me how to do the heart. I think it's really cute that people can do that. Like, it's so precious. But yeah, I hope you guys have an amazing day, evening, month, year. Just have a great whatever you're doing. And I love you all very much. This Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you want to request anything, my request form is still down below, by the way. For those of you who have requested, I saw my last three requests. And I am, I am doing them. I'm, I wrote them all down. Shout out to Angelina. They wrote their name down on the little, like, if you want to include your name. So shout out to Angelina. I did see your request. And to the other people, I saw your request too. And I will be doing them very soon. So yeah. Have a lovely day. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.